Hi guys, in this vodcast, I am going to walk us through a genetic problem where we are dealing with the inheritance pattern of dominant and recessiveness, and we are only working with a monohybrid. So a single trait is the only thing we are going to track through these generations. And this will be the first in a series of what we'll call mini vodcasts that are simply examples of how you handle different types of problems and different inheritance patterns. But what's really cool is that the steps that we use today are the same exact steps you will follow for every every type of problem. It's just the big difference is how do you analyze the results at the end? So without, you know, kind of taking too much time, here we go right into the first one. So this first one, you know, like I said, is a monohybrid cross basic dominant recessiveness. We're going to take a look at two pea plants. The two pea plants that we're working with are heterozygous for both traits. And from that, we're going to determine the genotype and the phenotype ratio that we could see in the offspring from these two parents. So first and foremost, the first step is when you have this, is that you have to first assign your alleles that you're going to use. So I am going to begin with doing that. And so I'm just going to pick uh, the alleles that I wanna use. I'm gonna use a capital letter for my dominant. And since these are green, <laughs> I'm gonna look at that. So we have a big G, which will code for the green allele. And then we will have a little g that will code for the other trait, which is yellow. And that yellow allele is recessive. So I define that by giving it a lowercase letter. I define a dominant by giving it an uppercase letter. So that's a pretty standard rule of thumb. So once I have my allele signed, my second step is to determine the parent genotypes. Okay, so I pull that out of the problem that I have. So I'm told in the problem that the parents are heterozygous for green pods. That's a pretty important piece of information. So well, first I have to know what heterozygous means. That tells me that the genotype of each parent is not the same. And so therefore, since there are only two alleles for this trait, I can say that that heterozygous means that each parent has a dominant allele and a recessive allele in their chromosome pair. So heterozygous, right? And I'm gonna cross it with the other heterozygous parent because I'm told they both are in the problem. So once I've determined the parent genotypes, then I go into step three, which is to determine the gametes each parent can give. So, this is a really important part because when we determine the gametes, you only care about what are the possible different ones that the parent could give. So if there's only one gamete that each parent could give, you know, like no matter what, it's the same, you only have to write it down once. We only care about what's different. So when I look at both of these and I see, hey, they're both heterozygous, that tells me when that chromosome pair splits, and let's remind ourselves what that means, right? So if I have that on a pair of chromosomes, right, there's my one chromosome, here's my homologous pair, I know that the one chromosome has a dominant allele, the other one has a recessive. So when that chromosome pair splits during meiosis and we create that gamete, that parent could pass on, right, a dominant allele, or they could pass on a recessive. Okay, so there are two options for that parent. If a parent, let's say, was homozygous recessive, so their pair, each one, had a lowercase g, no matter what, they're giving a lowercase g. I only have to write it down once. So I look at both these parents, they're both heterozygous, and I find that this is an easy way to do it, put a circle around it, that defines each gamete, right? A gamete is the sex cell that gets passed on to the next generation. So that's one parent's gametes. The other parent is the same deal because they're both heterozygous. So now that I have the gametes set, the next step, step four, okay, is to then use those gametes to set up your square. So you're gonna set up your Punnett square using the gametes that each parent could give. 
So now that I've got the gametes set up, okay, I can take one parent. So I take the gametes from one parent and I write them across the top. Initially, if it helps you to circle them, do, because that reminds us that what we're actually crossing is what's found in the gametes. I take the other parent and I put it down the side. So there's that, right? So now I can determine my square set up from that point, okay? So there's that piece. Now, step five is to do the cross. Actually say, okay, what happens if this gamete meets that gamete? My kid will have a homologous pair that has a big G and a big G in it. They will be homozygous dominant. But what if this gamete meets up with the recessive? What happens if it's the recessive that that parent gives just out of dumb luck chance? Then that kid would have one of each. If this gamete meets that gamete, same deal. I'm still, you know, have the possibility of being heterozygous. And just general rule of thumb when you're dealing with dominant and recessive, you always write the dominant uh, allele first. But what if that gamete with the recessive meets that gamete with the recessive? That kid is going to be homozygous recessive. So what shows up in each square is actually what are the possible outcomes for the kid, for the offspring? That's what's in the square. That is now your zygote, right? And so my zygotes here, these are what I could possibly get in the next generation. So once I have those done, I go to step six and I answer whatever the question is. Okay, so I answer my question. In this case, I'm determining my genotype and phenotype ratio. As we look at this and my outcome, my genotype ratio is what are the possible genotypes proportion, right, that these two parents could give, that I could see if I go and grow this next generation of pea plants. And so from this, what is the actual genetic combination? I have the possibility of getting one big G, big G, to two big G, little g, to one little g, little g. Remember, ratios are comparing. What are my proportional outcomes, okay? I could do that as a percentage too. I could say I'm gonna get 25% chance because I have four possibilities here. Out of those four possibilities, one of them, one out of the four is big G, big G, right? So that's 25%. Half, two out of four are big G, little g. One out of the four is a little g, little g. So that's why my ratio looks like that. I'm asked for the phenotype ratio. My phenotype ratio, okay, is what will they actually look like? What's gonna be the actual expression of these traits in these offspring? So when I look at these, if they carry the dominant allele, they're gonna show the dominant trait. So three out of the four have the dominant allele. So 75% or three fourths or three of those plants should be green. Remember, this is the possibility every time there is a fertilization, okay? So the chance for every kid is the same because these are all independent events. It doesn't mean they will have this, but it's the chance of what every kid has to be. So three out of the four are green, only one out of the four is homozygous recessive. Since both alleles are recessive, they're gonna show the recessive and that, or 25%, and those plants will be yellow. All right, so just as a, you know, just a recap of the steps, okay, you begin by defining the alleles you wanna use. So make sure you identify what allele codes for what. You determine what the genotypes are of the parents in the cross. Then you have to take those parents and determine what gametes each one could give when meiosis happens. You set up your square, you do it out and then you answer the question. So every time we do these, that is the process you're gonna wanna take. So if there are any questions, make sure that you guys shoot us, you know, emails or ask the questions that you have and yeah, enjoy. These are really fun and we'll start using these not only with plants, but with, you know, human types of traits and all different kinds. So we'll be doing lots of practice with these. Take it easy and we'll see you soon. Bye.